So today we're going to start section 3.1, which is called numeration systems. And as we begin this section, the beginning part at least is definitely sort of a look back through history at the development of our numeration system, how we got to where we are, and why some of the things that were tried before us didn't stick and don't work and are no longer used. So the system that we have is actually called the Hindu Arabic numeration system, okay? So if somebody's like freaking out because their kid's coming home from school talking about Hindu Arabic, that's just the one we use all the time. We just don't call it all that, that all the time, right? Um, it was developed by the Hindu and transported to Europe by the Arabic. Some properties of our numeration system, things that you know and you don't really think about because it's so familiar to you. All of our numerals are constructed from 10 digits. They're the digits 0 through 9. Okay, so the number 10 is not a digit because it's two digits, but our digits are the numbers from 0 up to 9. So there are 10 digits. We have a place value system, and it's based on powers of 10. So everything is, um, right, so like we have the hundreds place, that's 10 times 10. Or we have the millions place, that's 10 to the sixth power, it's six tens multiplied together. It's all based on the powers of 10. Any idea why we have a base 10 number system? Any guesses? It works. It does work. There's other ones that work okay too, so it's not just because it works. Because we have ten fingers. Like, literally, that's why. <laughs> yeah. So if God had made us without thumbs, besides the fact that it would be really hard to do things like writing and holding <laughs> jars and whatever, um, we would have a base eight number system. I mean, that's it. That, that's why we have what we have. And you'll see very quickly that there's another numeration system that's base 20. Um, I think it'll be at the very end of our class today. Any idea why base 20 might have been a system that they tried? Yeah, fingers and toes, it's the Mayans, and the Mayans wouldn't have had shoes, right? Or if they did, they had sandals, so you could see the toes. So they've got a base 20 number system, and they've got some other caveats to theirs, too. The first one we're going to look at, though, uh, oh, one more thing. Um, we're going to need this here in a minute um, as we see a few things. Powers, uh, the power rule, like A to the N. So if you have A times itself N times, we can abbreviate that by writing it as a power with an N. So we're going to be using that as we work our way along. All right, but the first people that we're going to actually talk about are our friends, the Egyptians. And I'm going to just be quiet for a second while you draw, draw the little pictures, because I think you'll have to on your paper, right? My apologies right off the bat that I am not a good artist. So if you look um, in your book and you see the image looks a little different, that's, that's probably a legit argument to make is that my pictures are just not real good. Um, but I think they're passable. Uh, the first one is a vertical staff, just looks like the number one. The second one is called a heel bone. The third is a scroll. The fourth one's the one where we start drawing things that are a little bit more complicated. It's a lotus flower. Uh, the next one, pointing finger. Mine never look good. I don't draw pointing fingers very well, apparently. Um, <laughs> the one after that, it depends on the resource that you use. Our book calls it a polywog. Um, I've also heard other books call it a burbo fish. So, uh, and then the last one is an astonished man. And um, the other interesting thing about this is that different resources actually draw these differently, too. For example, if any of you did do contemporary math that was online, I believe our contemporary math book for the um, Astonished Man makes it look like this. Is that true? Dana, you, did you do contemporary math with me online? Yeah, I think that's what it looks like. So there, there seems to be some inconsistencies, but I kind of chalk it up to, like, 
you know, these are both the number four, right? And stuff like that. There's texts and there's types, and so it's probably something like that. At any rate, each of these different symbols has a value that we're going to write as our, like in our number system's value. The vertical staff is the value of one. The heel bone has a value of 10. The scroll is a value of 100. What do you suppose the lotus flower is? It's 1,000. The pointing finger, 10,000. Uh, the polywog, yep, 100,000. And the astonished man, I think he's astonished because he's worth a million. That'd be good stuff, right? Fifth grade son was telling me the other day how he wants to be a millionaire. He said, we better start saving money because you can't keep buying things the way you buy them if you want to be a millionaire. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to take a look at, um, so put, sort of put your hat on that says, I'm an Egyptian. You don't have to walk like an Egyptian, but just pretend for a sec. I'm an Egyptian. And I have this specific number. The number that we're going to use is this one right here. So it has um, three scrolls and then a heel bone, okay? And we're going to think what it looks like if we're an Egyptian and we want to sort of take one away, find the number before this one, or add one to this and find the number after this one. And in the end, we'll turn it back into our number system and we'll take off our Egyptian hat and actually think about this from the perspective um, of, um, you know, of current day Americans, whatever, okay? So, on the first one, the numeral that comes before and the numeral that comes after, we're going to actually do part B first because it's the easier of the two. What number would I do? What would it look like to find the number that comes after this? What do you think? Yeah, we would just add that vertical staff at the end to it. So it would look just like it already does. We'd have three scrolls and a heel bone. And we just add on a vertical staff. That's sort of the next number in their number system. So the vertical staff is worth the value one. So if we're finding the number before or the number after, we're either adding or taking away a vertical staff. So why does that make part A harder than part B? Because I've got scrolls and heel bones and I don't have any vertical staffs to take away, right? Like the original number I started with doesn't have a vertical staff to take away. So any idea what you might do instead? You're thinking about Roman numerals, oh, which yeah. we'll get to. <laughs> nope, that's not what they did. Somebody else. Take away one. Elizabeth? Brooklyn? Somebody want to give me? You guys are both chatting, so I'm not sure who wants to speak. Come on, Elizabeth, give us a suggestion. Um, no, but that's a good guess. No half symbols. Okay, in place of what? To take away the heel bone and draw nine. Okay, good. So we still have our scrolls. We will no longer have a heel bone because the heel bone is worth 10. And instead we will have nine staffs at the end. Okay, so now let's think about it. This is what we do with money all the time, right? So if I have a $10 bill and my son wants to take a dollar to school for PTO popcorn, I have to take the $10 bill and I have to turn it into 10 ones, and then I have to give him one of the ones and I'm left with nine ones, right? No more $10 bill in my wallet, now I have nine ones, or maybe I have some fives in there or something like that. But we do this all the time, okay? So yeah, that, that's exactly what we would do. We would remove our heel bone and we would replace it with nine ones. All right. Question C says, what is this value? And this is not identified very well, but when it re keeps referencing this value, it's talking about the original value. What is this value, the original value in the Hindu Arabic numeration system? What is it? 310. Scrolls are worth 100 each, so there's 300 of them, right? 300 total from that value, and then the heel bone's worth 10. So this is 310. All right, so now we're going to go from the other direction. Namely, we're going to take one of our numbers and we're going to write it in Hindu Arabic. I mean, we're going to write it in Egyptian from our Hindu Arabic. So our number that we're going to start with is 23,145. 
and we're gonna go just down the line because that's how their system works. The two in that number is in our 20 thousands. How do we get, or sorry, 10 thousands. How do I get 10 thousands in the Egyptian numeration system? What symbol is it? Pointing finger, so how many pointing fingers do we need? Two. two. So we're gonna draw two pointing fingers. Told you my fingers are terrible. I warned you. How about the three? How am I gonna get the three with the right value? Kira? You got it, three lotus flowers, yeah. So something like this. What about the one? Yeah, one scroll. The four. Four heel bones. And the five? Five staffs. Wow. Takes up half the page, right? Okay, so there's always pros and cons about these number systems. So let's actually talk a little bit about that before we move on. Tell me something about this that's a pro. Something that's good about their number system. Are the numbers easy to read and to know what they mean? Can you identify what value it is pretty quickly and easily? I think you can, especially if you were more familiar with some of the symbols and so forth. But going back and forth between our system and their system is a very straightforward process. Each of the symbols has a specific value and we just repeat symbols. What about their process or their number system is maybe not so good, a con? It's really long. Got to write a lot, don't I? Um, and the bigger the values are like that we think about, like we had a whole bunch of nines. Do you want to write 99,999 in Egyptian? Me neither. I don't want to write nine symbols, right, out for each of those, numer those, uh, those images, those pictures. So there's some pros and there's some cons. Something else, and we'll talk more about this later, but just to be aware of, is that they don't have, notice, they don't have a number zero. Okay? That's going to become more and more problematic as you see more number systems that don't have it either. But that is a problem. So let's go to the next ones, the Mayans. I already mentioned to you before, I'm sorry, not Mayans, we're doing Babylonians before Mayans, Babylonians. Babylonians are very interesting. They only have two symbols. Um, they have this triangle, this sort of pointing downward symbol, uh, and it has a value of one. And they have what sort of looks like an arrowhead pointing left, and it has a value of 10. Now, when I use the computer to generate these symbols, they'll look like that. Um, to be honest, if I'm writing them out, I'm going to probably make this hollow, and I'm probably going to make this look like a less than sign, right? Because the shading, every, it just ends up making it look messier when I draw it differently. So if you want to abbreviate yours to have sort of that vacant feel to them, like mind you, that's okay too. Um, now, obviously, if I had the number like I did before, 23,145, and these are all I have to work with, I would seem like I would have to write a whole lot of symbols, right? And that sort of seems like a problem. Um, so the way that they get around that is that they have a place value system. So we have a place value system as well, right? So every power of 10 is, every place value we have is a power of 10. So if we have the ones place, it's actually 10 to the zero power. If we have the tens place, it's 10 to the one. If we have the hundreds place, it's 10 squared. So that's a place value system, and ours is a base 10 place value system. Theirs is actually a base 60 place value system. So what does it mean? Well, it means that instead of having, so let me write what ours is. Don't write this down. Instead of having 1 and 10 squared and 100 squared, or sorry, 10, I got that wrong, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, right? Instead of having those powers of 10 like we have, what they have is they have powers of 60. So this is 60 to the 1 and 60 squared, and 60 cubed. And then, much like the Egyptians, they duplicate symbols to try to get things to be bigger. So for example, if they had the number uh, 54, 
they would write five of the arrow shapes and they'd write four of the triangles. So they, they duplicate those. But then once they get something big enough to be in a two place value system, write a number bigger than 60, they go to actually having two places. And so let's say they had the number, um, well, we'll just do 64. <clears throat> So the number 64 is actually 160, and it's four ones, right? Well, the way we write a one in their system is like this, 160. And then I need four ones, and the way I write a four in their system is I write four triangles. And that's their two place values, but unfortunately, they don't have anything like a comma. They don't have a place value separation quite the same way that we wished that they would, but this would be a two digit number, two place values. One place value for the 60s place and one place value for the ones place. Okay, so that's how they repeat the, the digits within them. So let's take a look then at an example where we're given one. It's awfully messy. Is it, it's actually on your notes, isn't it? So you don't have to copy it, that's good. Okay. A is actually the easier of the two questions on this one. Let me actually clarify one thing too before I continue. Um, I mentioned over here place values and how, the fact that there's no separation with like a comma or anything like that. There is one thing that automatically does separate and it's if you go from a place value that's lower to a place, not place value, a symbol that is lower, like this is a symbol worth one, right? To a symbol that's worth more, this is a symbol worth 10. So the bigger symbol comes in front of the lower symbol, and if that's not what happens, then what, you don't need to write all these in, but I just wanna show you. See this right here? That's normal. The ones at the end, oh my goodness, of all the tens is cool, but this one in front means that there has to be a place value break there. So this is a two place value value. There's the ones place, and here's the 60s place. Okay, so like think about our system. If we had the number 592, and I want the number before or the number after, the five and the nine at the beginning, they don't get affected, right? At least not initially. I would always go to the very last digit and affect it first. So if I have a two, I can go up one, or a two, I can go down one, and I don't have to affect the tens digit or the ones or the hundreds <coughs> digit. So the same thing's true here. If we're trying to find the number bef uh, before or after the one we're working with, we're going to go to the ones place, the far right place on this one, just like I did on the Egyptian one, and we're going to affect, in this case, only the triangles there that are at the end. So if I want the number before this one, what would you suppose that I would do? Yeah, that's exactly right. I just need to take away a triangle. So I'm gonna, and you're going to too, you're gonna to write out everything that's already there in just one triangle less. How many triangles are currently there? Did you count them yet? There are nine. Okay, so I've got the original triangle, I've got five of the arrows, and then I'm gonna have now eight triangles at the end. They don't necessarily touch the corners of them, mine just end up doing that because I'm moving quickly. That's the number that's before. Okay, so if we take away a triangle to get the number before, what do you suppose we do to get the number that comes after? Yeah, say Elizabeth. We add a triangle, except there's a problem on this one. What happens if I add a triangle? How many triangles would that give me? 10, but I don't need 10 triangles to represent the number 10. I could actually use one of the less than signs. So if I sort of, I'm like rounding up, right? This is like our system too, right? You know, if you can move it to be bigger, you keep moving it through the number. Okay, but then how many of the trying or the arrow symbols would that give me? Six of them. How much is six arrow symbols worth? 60. But what's the place value? 60, right? So again, I went from nine triangles to 10 triangles. I took my 10 triangles and I made it an arrow. Now I have six arrows. Six arrows is worth 60, so I'm rounding up the next symbol as well, okay? So 
here's what I end up having. I end up having the triangle I already had from the original value that's before the yellow squiggly. And then I have another triangle like this. Does anything feel weird about this at this point? Because it should. If I gave you that number and you didn't have any context to it, what would you assume that that number actually I just draw on the paper on the board is? That's the number two. But it's supposed to be representing the number 120 right now. And the problem is exactly that I have no way to put a placeholder of zero here because they don't have a zero in Babylonian. So over here, when it says, how else could the value found in B be interpreted? You've actually already answered it. It could be interpreted as the number two. You could even interpret it as the number 61. How might it be interpreted as 61? Yeah, the first triangle could be understood to be in the 60s place, and the second trial could be a triangle understood to be in the ones place. It could be 61. It says, what is this value in the Hindu Arabic numeration system? Well, what we were trying to do is we were trying to make it worth 120, right? So we were trying to make this value worth 120. That was our intent. Let's go back to the original problem that we started with, though. The original problem we started with had an arrow and it had, I'm sorry, it had a triangle, five arrows, and then nine triangles at the end. So again, this is my place value separation. I'm only going to put in separations where they absolutely require them to be. My assumption is as few as possible. So this is a 60s place, and this is the ones place. So I have a one in the 60s place, and I have, we've already counted them, so I'll just write it down, 59 in the ones place. And what would that be if I added and multiplied and all that good stuff together? One times 60 plus 59 times one. What is that? I just want you guys to add this together. <laughs> yeah, just add this together. It's 120. But this is one this one's 119. The original one I had up here was 120. Yeah, so the new one that I've got highlighted in blue is that's 119. The original value was 119. So obviously Babylonians have some problems. Um it's not good that there's not a zero, and it's really not good in their system. It was sort of like okay, there's no zero in the Egyptians, but you didn't really see a need for it, so you can kind of sort of, you know, move on past it. We need it now. Absolutely need his number zero. Not only that, but you also need something to separate the place values, right? Because if I wanted to do the number 61, it would be two triangles. But how do I designate that the two triangles are sort of not together? Do I need to put a space between them? Maybe I do. Maybe there needs to be some other symbol between them that separates them, a comma or something like that. That's what, you know, we tend to use sort of place value thinking in ours. Um, yeah, so there's some problems. Can you tell me something that's good about this system compared to the one we have or maybe compared to the Egyptians? Fewer symbols to memorize. Yep, that's definitely a good thing. Anything else? 60 has something to do with how many minutes or an hour? Mm -hmm. It does. We'll see that happen with the, um, it, the Mayans in a minute, too, that they, they talk about. It's not necessarily minutes in an hour because that's a contrived human nature kind of thing, yeah. but it has more to do with, um, well, we'll get to it, the Mayans, but with the, the length of a year, okay. calendar year, which is not a man-made convention um, in terms of our minutes. So, yeah. Cool. You ready to try some new one? Oh, wait, we got one more in this one. Two more in this one. No, it was one more. Okay. We have the number now, 43,205. 
I think that's the same one we had before, or very similar. And we're going to write it in Babylonian. So, there's a lot going on in this question. Um, the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out what place value values go in these base 60 systems. So if you think about this, we mentioned before that we have the ones place, and then we have the 60s place, and then we have 60 squared, and then we have 60 cubed, and we could keep going, right? 60 to the fourth and so forth. So the first thing that we need to figure out is we need to figure out what those powers values are. So 1 and 60 are just fine, but what is 60 squared? Actually, let me write it underneath it. What would 60 squared be? Mm-hmm, 3,600. And what would 60 cubed be? Two hundred sixteen thousand. So the first thing to do is to take a look at those values in their place value system and figure out how many of the places we're going to need. In particular, we do not need the sixty cubed. How come? Why do I know I don't need that place value? It's too big compared to what? The number that we're given. Right. It's bigger than 43,000, so I don't need it. So there's only three place values that I'm going to need. The 60 squared's place, the 60's place, and the 1's place. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a division algorithm that we're going to be using multiple times for multiple different parts of this particular lesson. Okay. So I kind of like it because it shows the ability to repeatedly divide something by new values all in a nice chart. So start with, you might start over to the side so you'll have space to go down, sort of like on my paper, I've written it at the very top of the next like piece of space, okay? So what you're first going to do is you're going to write the biggest value, place value that we have, which for us right now is 3,600. You're going to write out what sort of looks like a top hat with the 43,205 underneath the, the hat part. Your calculator is really going to be helpful in this section. So if you have it, you know, keep it out, grab it, whatever. If you don't, then it's fine. Just wait for everybody else to give us a value. What we want to do is we actually want to do a division. We want to take 43,205 and we want to divide it by 3,600. And I want to know how many whole number of parts it goes in. I don't need any decimals or fractional pieces or remainders at the end right now. Just the whole number part. So how many whole number values of 3,600 will go into 43,205. What'd you get? It'll go in more than once. Oh, 12. 12. Yeah, it'll go in 12 times. So if you just do the division in your calculator, 43,205 divided by 3,600, it's going to spit you on an answer that says 12 point da 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 da. I care about the 12. Okay? Step two multiply the 12 by the 3,600. So this is kind of like, you know, in elementary school when you put the 12 on top, right? You put the 12 here and then you do a multiplication. Yeah, it's like that. So what is 12 times 3,600? 43,200. It's really close, actually, to the value we were given. Really close. We're going to subtract. We're going to draw another top hat down here. If I subtract here, I just get 5, right? So if you look back over at what we were doing, we did the 60s place, excuse me, the 60 squared place. We are going to do 60 here, and I know it feels a little bit funny, but just bear with me so you can see why. And it may not even be today that you see why, but we'll get there. We're going to divide by every power of 60 that's, big, that's smaller than the biggest one we started with. So 60. How many times does 60 go into 5? Zero. Right? 60 doesn't go into 5. That's okay. We're just going to put a 0 here. 0 times 60, well, that's 0. And we're going to subtract. Well, I got 5 again. Not very exciting, but that's what we have. 
So I've done the 60s place now. So the last thing to do is to divide by 1. How many times will 1 go into 5? 5. 5 times 1 is 5, and when I subtract 5 at the end, I get 0. These numbers over here are really important. They are the values that I'm going to draw now in Babylonian. So, starting with the 12, how do you draw 12 in Babylonian? Right? These kinds these symbols over here. How do I do how do I draw 12? Uh-huh. The arrow symbol and then what? Two triangles. And boy, do I wish I had something, but how do I draw a zero in the numeration system for the Babylonian numeration system? I don't. I don't have anything to draw a zero with. So I just keep moving past the zero. Some other systems we will have things. So that's why I want the zero to be present in the work for now. But then I need a five. So how do I draw a five in the Babylonian system? Five of these. It's bad, right? Because it really looks, even if I have the space separating it right here to sort of signify that I have two place value systems, I still don't have any way to show that there's a missing one in between. Such a problem. Can you imagine bookkeeping if you were a Babylonian? This would be bad. So don't, whoops. This is the best we can do. It really is the best that we can do in Babylonian for that value. All right, so we are going to get to Mayan today. Very exciting. I don't think we'll finish it, but we'll see. The Mayans. Oh, the Mayans. The Mayans have three symbols. They have a dot worth a value of one. They have a horizontal sort of line segment piece, and it's worth the value of five. And praise be, they have the shell because the shell is worth zero. The Mayans finally got the zero in there. I mean, they got other problems, so have no fear. We're going to find their problems. But they do have a zero, which would have definitely helped us out if the Babylonians had one in the last problem, right? Would have. Okay, they do have a place value system, like the Babylonians did where theirs was base 60. But the Mayans, like we talked about, is base 20, fingers and toes 20. But it's not just base 20, it's actually a modified base 20. So we come back to that in a minute. It's written vertically, so their lowest place values on the bottom and their highest place values on the top. So it kind of like if, if we used our system, it would be like putting our ones place here and our tens place here and our hundreds place here, and we're stacking them. Okay, so that, that's what they do. They're going to stack their, their symbols on top of each other from the bottom to the top. Okay. And they put the dots above the bars within a place value. For example, if you had the number eight, it would be three dots on top of a bar. Dots on top of bars. Okay? So let's go back to that modified base 20 business. So, like I said, they don't have base tens, but they still start with the number one. We would go to 10 next, they go to 20. If it were truly a base 20 system, what would happen next is they'd go to 20 squared, and then 20 cubed, and then 20 to the fourth, and all that stuff, just like the 60s did back with the Babylonians, just like our 10s do. But they don't do that. Their next place value is actually 20 times 18. I'll discuss the why in just a sec. After that, they put powers on 20s. So then we have 20 squared times 18, and I'll do one more. Let me shift this down a little bit. 20 cubed times 18, and so on. So the 20s do get powers after this weird 20 times 18 spot. So grab a calculator, and somebody tell me what is 20 times 18. It's 360. 
And we'll write out the other ones here just because we're going to need them later anyway. What's 20 squared times 18? What is it? 7,200, thank you. And what's the 20 cubed times 18? Do we have it? Is it 144,000? Yeah. Okay. So, AK asked me a question about degrees. No, minutes. You asked me about minutes. The 360 here is very special. They didn't do this by accident. They chose to make their place value system have the 20 times 18 instead of 20 squared in it because their approximation for a year is that it was 360 days. Okay, that's why they did it. Now their approximation is a little off, right? That's where the 360 is coming from. So these are the values we're going to need here in a little bit when we change numbers back and forth in their system. But before we do that, let's just look at some of their numbers and try to move forward and backward like we have with the other systems. All right, so we have this number where it's got two dots on top of a line and then four dots on top of a line. And over here, it says, number four, that dots are above the bars. So if you ever see a location where there's dots below bars, what that means is the place value had to have changed. Okay? These can go together because the dots are on top of the bars. These two can go together because the dots are on top of the bars. But you have to break them apart when the bars come on top of the dots. Now, I already drew this one over here for the number eight right, a bar with the three dots on top. So what do you suppose the value is on the bottom one? It's a nine, right? And what is the value on the top place value right now? Seven. It's a seven. Okay, good. All right, so let's talk then about what comes before and what comes after. The before one is the easiest one on this. So again, just like in our system, we only affect the ones place, and in their situation, the ones place is what's ever on bottom. So what would I have to do to get the number that comes before this if I'm only looking at the bottom value? What's that? Yeah, take away a dot. Make sense? You take away a dot, you take away one. So the top value doesn't change. It's a dot, dot line. It stays the same. But now instead of four dots in a line, I'll have three dots in a line. There's an eight on the bottom now instead of a nine. So think with me, what comes after then? What would I do to find the number after this? What would I do? It's kind of like the tally system where after you get five, it turns into the sum. Okay, so what we would want to do is add a dot, right? You guys are already way ahead of me because you're like, well, I know what I'm supposed to be answering, but I know she's going to tell me that's not right. What we want to do is add a dot, but if you add a dot, you get five dots. And what does five dots equal? A line. So again, at the top, we're good to go. We got two dots in a line, but now on bottom, we have two lines. And do you see a problem? It was really easy when I started to separate place values, right? There were some dots and there were some lines and there was this natural separation. There's no natural separation anymore. I just got a bunch of lines, and they all look like they're kind of, you know, together. So what d does this value, or how might this value be interpreted? Looks like 17. Uh-huh. It might be interpreted as 17. Or, I mean, it could be interpreted that you separate every single piece of it. Right? Like, there's a 2 in the first place, and then there's a 5 in the second place, and there's a 5 in the third place, and there's a 5 in the fourth place. So there's five ones. There's a 5 in the 20s place. There's a 5 in the 360s place. There's a 5 in the 72, I'm sorry, a 2 in the 7200s place. Like, you could just say, well, maybe there's just a separation in between everything. Maybe there is have absolutely way, no way of knowing, right? But what we were intending to do is what we did initially. 
We were intending to take our number, well, what we are interpreting this number to be, uh, the original number, was that there were seven here, nine here. I know I'm running out of time. I'm sorry, guys. Give me just a second to finish up this particular part of the problem. And this is supposed to have been interpreted as, whoops, a seven in the 20s place and a nine in the ones place, right? That's, that's what we expected when we started the problem. And so this number actually is the number 149. Yeah? And so what we were expecting that our problem B's value was was really 150, the number afterwards. That's what we were trying to write down. Writing down the one number 150 would look like what we did on part B. All right, so we will finish our little bit with the Mayans and move on to some other things next time. Here is your one tiny little assignment, and we'll see if any of you do it. I want you to take a good hard look at the Rayleigh Chapel clock. There's Roman numerals on it. Take a picture of it if you wish or whatever. There's a problem with the Rayleigh Chapel clock. And if you know it, don't tell anybody else in the class. Let them figure it out. Abigail's already known in her head. Don't you dare tell. I'm telling you. Okay? Check out the Rayleigh Chapel clock. I'll see you guys on Wednesday or on Friday.